welcome to the 13th episode of the fifth season of the Ubuntu UK podcast, also known as our 100th ever episode. <laughs> it's, Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's Tuesday the 14th of August and in this episode we're going to interview Edwin Lang... Oh, I've forgotten. <laughs> <laughs> Lingve of the Core 6 TH project and talk about our favourite moments from the last 100 episodes. We will, of course, cover the latest news events, bit about Ubuntu, tomorrow's technology today, and go over your feedback. We'll also announce the results of our competition to win an Eco PC. And if you're listening live, you can send us messages using the chat facility on the website and in the IRC channel. I'm Laura, and joining me for our 100th episode are Mark. Hello. Hello, Mark. What have you been doing since the last show? Uh, I've been making screencasts. Ooh. To, of? Um, just sort of documenting stuff that I've developed and um, sort of user documentation, a bit of technical documentation. Um, just I found that just sitting there and saying it and pointing at things on a screen is a lot quicker than trying to, you know, take screenshots and write some text explaining them and things like that. So I've been using... You lazy bugger. <laughs> I've got a lot to get through and limited time. You do a lot of stuff. Yes. Or I've done a lot of stuff, which I haven't documented very well. Oh, right. <laughs> Something like that. Anyway, so yes, I've been using Kazam to uh, record screencasts, which is an absolutely fantastic program. It's so easy and I've tried some screencast tools in the past and they've been absolutely dire by comparison. You literally turn it on and you hit go and it does it. And then it either dumps it into a file or into KDN Live or whatever you want. And it's mm -hmm. brilliant. I agree. Cool. Is that what you use, Alan? Yes. And a guy was... called David Classink uh, um, uh, wrote it, maintains it. And um, yeah, he's a lovely guy. And cool. He's done good work. Excellent. So, Alan, hello. Hello. What have you been doing since the last show? Well, first of all, I'd just like to raise the point that this isn't actually the 100th episode, because uh, there were a couple of episodes <laughs> slotted in before this. The, so this is about 101, e episodes, episode zeros don't count. Oh, Hence okay. the zero. Right, okay. All right. I went on holiday. Oh. Oh, where'd you go? I went far, far away to Paynton in Devon. <laughs> <laughs> was it good? Gosh. Yeah, it was really nice. Uh, had loads of lovely weather and... Um, uh, I went, had some nice food, spent some time on the beach with the kids digging holes and <laughs> making other people fall in them, <laughs> <laughs> Cre basically creating a danger area yes. around where we were sat on the beach so that nobody would come near us. An exclusion zone. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, I need one of those. But yeah, no, it was really nice being away <laughs> and, you know, semi-disconnected. I still had the phone and, you know, the iPad and stuff, but um, <laughs> yeah, I was mostly, uh, mostly disconnected. Left the laptop at home. Uh, no, One to, of them. That, to that as well. <laughs> right. to that as well. Um, desktop, desktop. No, I didn't take a full desktop PC. <laughs> yeah. no. See, that, that's fair. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, why right. he once went to Sweden with an iMac. Wow. Wow. They're wow. heavy. <laughs> what, They've the got a handle at the top, but mm. they're heavy. One of the ones with the CRT tubes. Mm. No, that's oh. an eMac. Oh. No, it oh. wasn't. Yeah, they were yeah. eMacs, yeah. They were iMacs. Not, not no, to be no. confused with eMacs. No. <laughs> Anyway, Tony, yes. so what have you been up to? We've had 100 episodes of this. I know. <laughs> Mark hasn't been here for all 100 talking about Emacs. So I think we've it's given not, up a long time before. It's not his fault. <laughs> um, I, I've been planning my uh, thing for Og Camp, actually, which yep. is uh, only this weekend. But I blogged about it on uh, Monday, yesterday. Uh, I'm going to try and do a, a photography project. And I blogged about it a little while ago. And some people said they were interested in helping out. So what the plan is, um, is basically I'd like to do a portrait of every person who is at Ogcamp. Okay. You're going to take a photo of every single person. Well, hopefully it'll be a bit of a team effort. <laughs> Otherwise I'll be really welcome. busy. Yes, exactly. So um, I'm going to bring some uh, camera kit along and there's a big backdrop thing that you can see on the stairs there that I've got to work out how to fit into the car. Um, That's going won't. to be interesting. It won't Tied fit into to the, the car. Roof. Yeah. Um, in a hatchback. Do you want to put it in my car? Yes, yeah, so you're taking your Volvo. Yes. Perhaps we can have this conversation off air. <laughs> <laughs> Is your Volvo here? Yes. Excellent. Right. Um, yeah, so I'm going to do, try to do this, this thing. And basically, the idea of take a photograph of everybody's at Odd Camp, um, not just for policing purposes, um, but actually. You're so, going to fingerprint them. Yeah. <laughs> RFID tag them too. We, we can't force anybody who doesn't want to have the photograph taken to have it taken, of course, but um, I thought it'd be a nice idea just to kind of get a, a, a creative portrait of everybody's at Odd Camp. 
um, and hopefully people will want to help out. If you do want to help out, just bring along your camera and a laptop or something. Bring along your face. Bring along your face if you want to have your photograph taken. But um, yeah, bring along a camera and uh, a laptop to process some photos on and uh, we'll work it out on the day, as they say. You said it doesn't have to be a fancy camera. It can just be like your iPhone or whatever. If you want to get involved, get involved. Just yeah, bring along whatever you've got and uh, we'll figure out what we can do when we're there. And hopefully it'll be something a bit different and a bit interesting. Cool. Brilliant. So yeah, what about you, Laura? I was in the US. Mm, and in yes. fact, I'm glad I'm glad Alan wasn't on the same beach that I was because we walked along the beach in the pitch black at one point going back to the hotel. <laughs> You're falling holes. No, then. but I was quite scared. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. Mental note to uh, go before you and uh, yes. dig holes. Yes. So yes, I was. Oh, it was brilliant. Yeah, you had a nice time. Yes. Good. Are you glad to be back? Yes. Really? <laughs> <laughs> Hands up if you're convinced. <laughs> it was hotter there. Yeah, I got that right. All right, okay, should we get on with our 100th show? Yes. Sounds like a fun pack show. Yay! Oh, I haven't heard that in a while. We're going to talk to Edwin Ligne, I think I've pronounced that right, from the Corsix TH project, um, which, well, Edwin, um, would you like to explain what Corsix TH is, please? Yes, um, it is a project which tries to mimic the 97 game Theme Hospital, uh, which is, uh, in my opinion, a very good game. Um, And since it's so old and just for Windows, uh, we're trying to mimic it as close as possible, uh, but make it so that you can run it on Windows or Ubuntu or other Linux systems or Mac or wherever you want to try it out. Uh, we have it on, someone ported it to Android, uh, not on the iPhone yet, but um, I think someone did it uh, for Nintendo Wii and... <gasps> <laughs> also, uh, this, uh, I forget the name now, which is Raspberry Pi. Oh, really? Uh, <laughs> wow. Trying, trying it there. Um, it started in 2009. Uh, there was a previous project called OpenTH, uh, which got abandoned. So uh, this guy called Corsix on the internet, Pete Corley, uh, he started out a new project and laid a very good foundation in C++ uh, uh, and Lua, which I'm mostly programming in. Uh, I have tried some C++ ages ago, but I'm not very proficient, uh, (laughs) so I can't really change that part. Uh, But it is a very good integration where all the logic is in Lua uh, and the basic rendering engine, et cetera, is in C++. so you don't really need to do very much changes in C++. So am I, I'm, am I right in saying this is not an it's not an emulator of any kind? You're re-implementing the game engine. So you've got the yeah. asset, assets from the original game, yeah, you know, the graphics and the um, and the, the, the sound <laughs> excellent sound effects <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and yeah, music. Yeah, exactly. but, but you're so re-implementing complete, the whole game. Yeah, it's a complete re-implementation. Uh, we have. As you say, we have the graphics and the sound, uh, but then everything is new. So we don't have any uh, of the original formulas, so to speak. So we're just playing the original game and trying to see how did this work roughly. Oh, wow. <laughs> uh, and it, uh, most of the things uh, turn out quite well, and we do some improvements. Mm-hmm. Uh, of course, we have the biggest screen resolution uh, and then we, some of there are a few bugs in the original which most people don't like. So we're not intending to re-implement those. Uh, <laughs> um, some uh, of our, our younger listeners might never have played Theme Hospital. So do you just want to, for them, explain uh, what it is and why you're so enthusiastic about it? Uh-huh. Uh, it's an old simulation game. Uh, for Windows 95. It was uh, even for DOS, I think, in the beginning. Yeah, uh, I, I had it on DOS before, before yeah, Windows. Yeah, yeah. DOS, yeah right. 
Um, so you're basically you get uh, some kind of uh, what is it? Uh, a place where you can build some rooms, oh, and then you can expand and. Uh, you just try to get it running and make money. You're bas- and, basically um, a manager, aren't you? Well, yeah, and yeah. You, get, you get a budget and, you know, you, yeah. you have to employ staff and manage their wages. Exactly. And yeah. There's lots of little and variables. there are some in criteria that. To, to win the level. There, are, there is a campaign with 13 levels and one extra little level where you just shoot rats. <laughs> um, then, <laughs> Uh, you have to meet some criteria to go to the next level, like making some money, uh, get a decent reputation. You have always three competitors, which you don't see. Mm-hmm. You just see their numbers. Uh, I have never, I have never seen them win. It's just that they, uh-huh. they are there. You get news um, alerts every so often about them, don't you? Yeah, exactly. So you get some hunch of how good am I. Um, and you expand, build, expand, go to the next level, build. Uh, Shoot rats. It's like many other simulation games. Mm-hmm. Uh, what, is, what is funny with this, in my opinion, is that it has this humor touch in everything. Yes. Mm. It is humorous diseases like <laughs> lotus, uh and gut rot, etc. Uh, and then, as you said before, the nice sound effect. Uh, quite nice, and especially the announcer. Uh, mm. She talks about doctors needing to get to rooms, but if nothing happens for a while, she might spit out something else, like uh, patients are reminded to keep their credit cards handy. <laughs> <laughs> and that is, it's very funny. And you, you guess. Yeah, one of the, um, having looked at the Core 6TH um feature page all the features are listed as things like rats and epidemics and then it's list- next to it, it says whether it's implemented or not and it's just it's really funny because all these things come back to you it's like rats not implemented yet <laughs> yeah yeah they do quite frequently uh, but at the same time people are know that this is we do it without profit and yeah when we have time so of course, when when a new person finds out about it and tries it out, and oh oh, where are the epidemics? They might submit a new issue, but then when we answer that, okay, it's not implemented, then they of course. So when someone uh, tries out the game, they they need to get Core Six TH from you, and they also need because you don't have the game assets, you, you have to get those separately. They'd have to buy the game, or if they've got an old CD, yeah. or or find it you know, on yeah. eBay or something. Yeah. And so you, what m- many people miss is that you don't really have to install the original game, you just need the assets. Uh, but they are available now from good old games, as we've seen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's uh, pretty cheap or, as well. Yeah, pretty cheap. I don't remember the exact price, but it's available there. And if you just want to try it out, there is also a demo uh. still available, uh, which you can download. Then, of course, you don't get everything because they didn't include the dialogue assets in the demo. <laughs> but you can play with all the diseases. And, and has, there been a, has there been any attempt to approach um, the original authors to try and get them to release the assets or release some data about the game so that you can improve this open version of the game? Yeah, they, um, it was Bullfrog who developed it. And they've been bought by Electronic Arts. Mm-hmm. And as late <laughs> as, I think, 2010 or 9, uh, there was uh, re-imple- re-implementation for the PlayStation Portable. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. So it yeah, has been really keen on it. quite recently. So they're not very very keen to let it go right. yet. Uh, but then there, there have been... For example, I don't remember the developer, but there is a, a game called Team uh, wait, wait, uh, Hospital Tycoon, Hospital yes. Tycoon, right. yeah. uh, uh, which was a disappointment for many. <laughs> <laughs> they, nice. they remember Team Hospital, and then there was this new game which wasn't really Team Hospital, so a lot of people got 
disappointed. It's basically that it's, it's so important now to have 3D graphics, mm. and unless you really are really good at 3D graphics, it gets a little... It's not as good. Uh, the, the, the gameplay is not as good unless you really need the 3D. It's just in the way sometimes. Right, absolutely. And also they, they have some kind of social aspect. Uh, doctors didn't get along with some nurses. Uh, <laughs> uh, might be funny, but <laughs> not, it's not for the same kind of people as those who say the hospital. So. Well, I, I, uh, I did... Um before I'd even heard of Core 68, I'd, I'd um, bought Theme Hospital from, probably from good old games, I can't remember where, some time back, and installed it on my PC. And my kids, one's five, one's nine, both came over and they, they love watching me play the game. Um, and they asked if I could put it on their computers as well. And uh, they both got little netbooks. So I, I eventually then found out about Core 68 from Laura. And it uh-huh. runs pretty well on their little... Celeron based netbooks. I was pretty surprised um, how well it runs. Is it, it's it's not a particularly big resource hog. No, no. Um, we haven't specifically started doing optimizations yet, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, for example, when I try it on my Android phone, it works very well, smooth, but it gets quite warm. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I found <laughs> so, that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> So it's not something you really sit for a long time with. Uh, but it, it works surprisingly well with touch, too. Yeah. I, was, I was a little bit skeptic at first, but when I tried it out, it was incredible, actually. Oh, there's not much even, in the way of typing in the game, is there? There's, no, no, exactly. It, and, it, it is all And clicking. even though, okay, the text becomes quite small, so, but you don't really do, need to read. Hmm. Yeah, I think the biggest so, difficulty for me was the size of my fingers relative to the screen. I think a tablet is probably better than a than a phone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So what what have you got um, that that are really high on your list of things you'd really like to get implemented? Um, now you've got the basic uh, game engine done. We are just in the process of including Earthquake. Oh, uh, cool! Right, one ruin everyone's day. <laughs> Yeah, uh, one of the challenges in the game where on the later level suddenly there's an earthquake and then uh, your machinery starts to deteriorate and life blow up. <laughs> and that, that is one of the funny things. Um, nowadays in new games, I mostly find that you can always undo something. You can always come back to a very good state. But here, if a r- room is blown up, it is blown. Mm. You cannot do anything about it. Oh, yes. Uh, and, and there was also a little twist to it, so that you had to, you had to really prepare for an earthquake. And if you had a blown room, okay, you might have some space over somewhere, but then suddenly you were out of room because you can't expand it. Limitless. Mm-hmm. And is all of that written in Lua? I mean, the the underlying engine is C plus plus, but the logic and or of of how yeah. that would happen, that's all in Lua. Yeah, so there are definitions for all the rooms and all the logic where a doctor goes where. Uh, So, very much in Lua. Uh, And it's quite nice to program in since you don't have to compile all the time. I I found that just looking through the defect list, the bug list, that um, I really got a sense of what's involved in making in the logic of a game because... You know, one of the bugs, and someone will say, "Oh, that's because the doctor is just in this interminable loop, so he can never leave a room." And like, "Oh, right, I see." <laughs> yeah, there are a few bugs, unfortunately. But we're, in the latest release, there are at least not. In we had the current release is zero point zero point one. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, before that, we had they were called betas, uh, from beta one to beta eight, uh, but they were. The risk of crash crashes were quite high, uh-huh. which is not very nice when you try it out. But I'm at the moment I'm trying to get it more stable. That is one of the focuses. It's getting more stable and earthquake. Uh, I I found it pretty playable. I mean, I, I actually stopped playing it because it got too easy because things like earthquakes weren't weren't there. But for, for quite a few levels, I could just keep playing it quite happily. Um, so I uh-huh. think people come into it fresh. Uh, or haven't played it for a long time, could be quite happy for a few hours. Mm. Yeah. 
Yeah. Have you? Have you? There. And we also have one thing that is new is that you can make your own levels. Oh wow, uh, that's cool. Uh, so we have a map editor, uh, which is very rudimentary but mm. still. It works, um, <laughs> and uh, you can, for example, I know we have one level where you have only one doctor. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can never hire anymore. Oh, oh wow! Yeah. So that gets challenging in that sense. And there was another player who made a map where just hordes of people arrived. <laughs> so, uh, not, not from the beginning, but they increased quite fast. Uh, but you had a screenshot where there were queues to the very first room, the GP's office, all around the hospital. <laughs> and really a challenge. So then the challenge might be to how, for how long can you keep the queue below some level. Right. Wow. So I, I have no idea how big a team it is, actually. There's a lot of people listed on the website, but are you looking for other contribu- contributors? Yes, very much. Mm-hmm. Uh, at the moment, we're a little uh, low on commit. Uh, mm-hmm. I am still active. Uh, I've been very busy during the, uh, the spring, but I'm starting to get more time again, uh, but uh, the original, uh, he who started it, Corsix, he is not active anymore, uh, and there was another guy, Manuel, who is not active either, so at the moment we don't have anyone who is actively doing commits that can program in C++, <laughs> uh, which uh, makes it a little hard when we need some changes there. So if, uh, it, if anyone's interested in t- helping out, where would they go to find out more? Uh, they can go to the Google Code webpage uh, to just have a look at, for example, what people have done recently or some basic how you get it started, etc. There is a wiki, mm-hmm. uh, and then they can contact me with via email. Uh, there is my email address there on the web web page, and we are very much looking for, especially C plus plus programmers. There are a few who have said they would try to do something, so we're slowly, possibly getting some new people in the loop. Uh, but of course, everything is welcome. For example, a better web page also be nice. Uh, okay, cool. Where, cool. Where especially new people can get to know it better. It's quite hard to look around at the moment. Excellent. Well, hopefully you'll get some interest from uh, from some of our listeners who want to relive their yeah, youth well, and uh, yeah. and spend time making people sick or, or mopping up sick or something like that. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, epidemics! Yes, they're not in. Yeah. <laughs> right. Thanks, Laura. Um, but thank you very much indeed for taking the time to talk to us this evening, and uh, we hope it goes well with the product in future. Thank you. Thanks. Thank thank you. Then. Bye. 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 It's the news. Netflix have open sourced Chaos Monkey, a tool for testing robustness of cloud infrastructure by terminating VM instances. I like the sound of this. It does sound mm. quite cool. Yes. Who knows what that means? Well, it's, uh, it's well, what it sounds like it means <laughs> is that, yeah, you pull the plug on things to see how robust your cloud thing is. Yeah, so right. if you've got lots of instances of your server, whatever it is serving your media yes. and then all of a sudden one of them goes what's going to happen yeah hopefully right. somebody else will pick it up but you don't know yeah. that until it happens unless you I use like something that. like this and you wait for the phone to go exactly yeah, exactly. Hey. Yeah, i like the sound of that excellent a bill introduced to the u.s house of representatives would if passed require parties who lose a software patent case and are deemed by the court to have had no reasonable chance of success to pay the defendant's legal bills the move could be a significant deterrent to so-called patent trolls although in its current form isn't limited to non-practicing entities what are, what are non-practicing practicing entities? That's basically a company that buys a load of patents oh, but yes. isn't actually implementing them in any products right. and just sues people over their use. Just hoarding them yeah. to use them for legal attacks. you got to make a living. <laughs> <laughs> Alan glares at Tony. Did you, the company who previously acquired the commercial licensing business for QT from uh, Nokia, have gone on to acquire QT? 
Is it cute? Cute. cute. It's cute. cute. We're going to get email. Cute. Uh, have <laughs> gone on to acquire cute in its it. entirety. The acquisition could see up to 125 employees moving from Nokia to Digia to continue work on the popular interface toolkit. Mm. Nice that it's, it's still... good news. Yeah, still sustainable. So what's Nokia for again? <laughs> um... <laughs> Don't they, they sell those phones that everyone... Well, wait. Those phones that look like really nice phones, but aren't. They, yes. <laughs> the ones that run Windows. The text of all current German legislation has been published on GitHub. The pro- oh, brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> the project... <laughs> Get in! The project aims to provide... a. Oh, thanks, Tony. Um... <laughs> The project aims to provide a resource showing how laws have changed over time and to encourage open discussion through use of pull requests for proposed changes to law. This is what I've been huh? waiting for. <laughs> I, I'm glad you, you're so supportive of the project, Tony. I am. Sounds like a good idea. App.net, a new paid-for messaging service akin to Twitter, but not a paid-for Twitter, has reached and exceeded its US dollar funding target. The service purports to put users first by making them, rather than the advertisers, their customers. Mm. Mm. It's the whole thing about if it's free, then you're not the customer, you're the product. Exactly. Yes. yes. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah, and they did a, um, what do they call it, a Kickstarter-like campaign. Right. But, but they didn't use Kickstarter, they did it on their own site. Oh, cool. And a lot so of people were sceptical that it, they would reach their target, and they've gone up to, what, 700,000 or something. Nice. It's fab on there. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So am I. The two of you just talk to each other. Yeah. yeah it's just a long, long But argument. we pay to talk to each other now. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Worth every penny. Um, a new bundle is out, this time featuring stories rather than games. Story Bundle features seven DRM free ebooks from indie authors at a price you set. This is like the humble indie bundle game stuff mm-hmm. that but we talked about, but with books. Yeah. I like the sound of this because cool I like ebooks, but I don't like DRM. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and they make a big point about the fact that it's DRM free, so you can read it on basically any device you want to. Yeah. Which is great. Rather like a book. They have some exactly. um, additional um, bonus things um, that you know you get if you pay over a certain amount. I think they've, I'm not quite sure they've captured exactly the, the way that the Humble Bundle works, because the Humble Bundle, you get extras if you go over the average. Uh, right. What relative. the Story Bundle have done is they've said, uh, go over $7 and you get, you get some extras. But they also haven't haven't done the whole graph showing you know who's who's paying most and all that kind of stuff. So there's not the social side to drive people to. Well, I couldn't find that anyway. Is it the same organisation? No, right. Yeah. Well, not from what I can see. Anyway. Right. Well, good idea though. Nice yeah, to see yeah, that model yeah, model mm. spreading its wings a bit. Mm. And that's the end of the news. And now it's time for the events, Alan. Wouldn't you say? I'd say. <laughs> Yeah, probably. <laughs> so what's going on? Are there any events? I can't imagine there are any. I think there's something this on. weekend. There is. Only guys meeting up in a weekend. pub or something. Yes. Og Camp. This weekend in Liverpool. Wow. OMG. Wow. WTF. Indeed. Yes. Really excited about it. So yes. Mark, tell us more. It. Um, well, I've been telling everyone more and more and more about it for the past few weeks, and I'll be here all day if I go over everything now. So if you go to www.ogcamp.org, you can find everything you need to know about OgCamp. But mm-hmm. I am going to take this opportunity to thank our kind sponsors. Oh, they're definitely worth thanking. Yes. Yes. Uh, so uh, Open Labs and Liverpool John Moores University, supported by the European Regional Development Fund, are giving us the venue. <laughs> That's just awesome. Um, yes. And if you follow me on Twitter, you would have seen the picture I posted of the venue, and it is enormous. And awesome. And mm. awesome. Looks and lovely. very new mm. and shiny, and we've got lots of space, and that's going to be brilliant. So thank you very much to them. Um, we also have Bike Mark for all your VPS needs and servers and hosting and stuff, who have given us some money so that we can, you know, do the event because we have to buy stuff. Uh, O'Reilly. Oh, really? O'Reilly. Yeah, O'Reilly. Um, are sponsoring the Geek Nick. Is um, Josette coming? I don't know, probably. Um, and yet, yeah, probably giving us some books or vouchers books or something stuff, to give away yeah, and probably selling absolutely. books at the exhibition and so on. Um, <laughs> this is where we get into the probabilities and maybe. Yes, yeah. uh, I'm sure <laughs> I read that in an email. Uh, Transitive Technologies of uh, Adam Sweet fame oh. yes, have given us um, 
Oh, this is awesome. Have given us a prize for the raffle, Ooh. which mm. is uh, quite like what I'm holding in my hand, in fact. Oh. Uh. <laughs> and what's that, it's, Mark? It's a Nexus 7. A oh. Google Nexus 7. An Android wow. tablet as a prize yeah. to give away like at cool. Camp, And you can only win it if you're at Camp. Yes, you have to yep. be there, otherwise we'll give it to someone else. Uh, Canonical have sponsored us with probably some other raffle prizes, I'd imagine. Aren't they lovely? Yes. <laughs> year lovely after year, they, they keep giving us <laughs> I know. stuff to give away. Wow. And finally, Scraper Wiki, who... Um, that's not as unpleasant as it sounds. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they oh, no, no, no. Uh, do open data publishing and stuff. Um, Guardian and they're based uses in, them, don't yeah, they? Yeah, and they're, they're based in Liverpool. Oh, um, oh nice. Are they coming they, on? They're going to be sponsoring um, some drinks vouchers. We're going to have a, a little cafe set Ooh. up in the venue, and um, I think the first 300 people are going to get a free drink. Wow. From the cafe. Ooh, how so awesome is that? This is really cool. Get there quick, because otherwise you won't get one. But if yeah. you missed any of that or you want clarification of any of it, just go to the website, ogcamp.org, and it's this weekend. And which we is will, there's so much going on. 18th, yeah, 19th really of August. But also, if you turn up on the Friday, I'm sure somewhere there will be beer We consumed. will be underneath the official hotel in a bar, <laughs> which is apparently there, called not, Wave. Not a car park. Not a car park. Dan okay. assures us there's something underneath. Yes. <laughs> but it's going to be brilliant. All four of us are going to be there. The little it's Outlaws guys are going to be there and a whole crew of volunteers helping make it a fantastic weekend mm. and you guys come give talks yes. otherwise it doesn't no point. quite work does it <laughs> <laughs> it's always worked before <laughs> <laughs> A couple of other events to tell you about. The first one is SkyCon, which is the 6th and 7th of October in Limerick in Ireland, mm. uh, at the university mm-hmm. there. And uh, They've got some interesting speakers lined up for they that. They have, yes, including me. Yay! <laughs> what are you going to talk about? I don't know yet. Uh, I'm going to go along and represent the Ubuntu UK podcast Massive. And uh, <laughs> and, and more interestingly, drink some they, they have some other guests. I think they've got Randall... Um, Randall Monroe, Randall XKCD. Monroe. Yeah. He's saying he's more oh, yeah, interesting than me. Oh, yeah, I saw that. Yeah, and uh, Mark Shuttleworth is yes. going to be there as well. Ooh. Yes, and uh, Ooh. Stuart, Stuart Langridge. Langridge as well. Yeah. We're also scraping in at the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Stuart. <laughs> Hope you're still coming to our camp. <laughs> and finally, Hack Manchester is on the 27th to 28th of October. It's a 24-hour coding competition being held at the Museum of Science and Industry as part of the Manchester Science Festival. And you can find out more at hank... <laughs> hackmanchester.com. That sounds awesome. Yeah, sounds like good fun. That's the end of the news and events. Hello. And welcome to Tomorrow's Technology Today. I'm Douglas Austin Cambridge, and it's a good day to our charming hostess, Miss Deirdre Morris Oxford. Good day, Douglas. Why are you looking at me in that peculiar manner? Whatever can you mean, Deirdre? Bending over backwards like some native dancer from the Caribbean colonies. I'm wearing my periscope glasses for reading in bed, Deirdre. They're a prototype. Listeners may recall some time ago we invited the general public to submit ideas for future inventions, with a grand prize of some 50 guineas. I have here a short list of the finalists. The periscope glasses for reading in bed are sent to us by Miss Ermintrude Spoon of Tavistock. Well done, Ermintrude. Yes, well done, Ermintrude. What else have we? Miss Charity Hyman of Middle Wallop sent us this electrically operated vibrating personal massage device, at least I think that's what it is, which she is hoping to retail by mail order. Douglas, it looks rather like a... And finally, Miss Otteline Squirrel of Bell End sent us this photograph of a chair mounted on a banister rail for raising elderly and infirm persons upstairs. There's no point holding up a photograph to the microphone, Douglas. This is radio. Which she built originally for her elderly Aunt Hannah. She's called it the Hannah Stair Chair. It's the Hannah Stair Lift. I notice, Douglas, that all the finalists are young women. Why, bless me, Deirdre, so they are. Well, there's a triumph for inventors of the female gender everywhere. Remind me, who's judging this competition again? Mm, yes, we have an eminently qualified panel. Eminent. What happens next? The finalists travel to London to be personally assessed. 
Uh, there's a splendid little hotel I know at King's Cross. The judging panel wouldn't happen to include you, would it? I... And who else? Yeah. And that's all we have time for on tomorrow's technology today. A toodle pip and God save the king. If any personal massage devices get used on those young women in squalid hotel rooms, I'm reporting you to Lord Reith and New Scotland Yard. I say, steady on, Deirdre. <laughs> It's competition time. Ooh. Yes, it is. Yeah. How so, exciting. You may remember. <laughs> you rather, it, like DJ school or something. <laughs> Pretty bad. It's DJ about time school. we learned some yeah. lessons <laughs> how to do this stuff properly. Okay, so you may remember a couple of episodes ago that we set a competition, and the competition was to win an Eco PC. Wow, that's a great prize, it is, Tony. Isn't it, mate, isn't it? Just fantastic. Um, the competition was to win an Eco PC, which is a low power, solid state, fanless. Um, in fact, no, sorry, the disc isn't solid state, but it's fanless. Um, low power pc mm-hmm. which was given to us by the people at evot.biz who make them um, who gave us great. some lovely codes to give yes, you discounts so, oh, yes. yeah, so I, you I hope you enjoyed your discounts listeners. yes i think there might be about three days left to use them so uh, cool. you know still there's still an opportunity but more importantly we had a competition so we set the question uh, and we had lots of right answers about 50 of them which is really good and uh, laura are we keeping you up yeah right okay <laughs> <laughs> I think it's all the cakes kicking in. So we had all these right answers. How are we going to select the winner? Um, a random number between one one two two and one one seven three. So maybe just between twenty two and seventy three. Yeah. Okay. Fifty uh, five. No, fifty three. I was going to say fifty six. <sighs> right. Split the difference. Fifty five. Right. Hey. Okay. <laughs> so Let's who, see who, who that is. That? Let me just check. Uh, it's a very long answer. Uh, 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 uh. Somebody has written an essay describing this. Um, you sure it's not spam? No. no, no. <laughs> His name, I think it's a him. His name is Oscar Morand. Oscar Morand. You're Oscar a Morand. winner. You, you win are... the EcoPC. Yep, you're our winner. So if you can email in from the address that we that you sent the original email from, ha ha ha, uh, email us in and let us know your address and we can arrange to have the thing shipped out to you. Um, but thank you very much for taking part and well done. And uh, we will speak to you soon. And that's the end of the competition. Cool. So it's our uh, 100th episode. Arguably. Arguably. It's it's at least our 100th episode. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> dear me it's yeah our 100th actual episode so we wondered what we'd do to celebrate yes um, and about we, half an hour, we decided to we, eat cake we thought yeah. yeah we had cake but sorry we can't share that with you we've got a photo um so we, we <laughs> thought we're eating cake, yeah, eating cake. Uh, we thought we might gratuitously wander back through the archives and pick yes. out stuff that happened yeah um this is probably the most prepared segment but in the shortest time. <laughs> yes. We do have a lot of stuff series. to talk about. So, yeah. season one started, what, well, what year was that? 2008. 2008. Yeah. Oh, so, we must have been using 804 at the time. And we were in... No. Uh, no, it was no. before 804. It was beginning of the year. Uh, yeah. And with the first one was recorded half at Odd Camp. Yes. And no, half... No, Odd Camp didn't exist as a concept. It was... No, no, not, not Odd Camp. Uh, Fosdem. 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 Yes. And half in your and Becky, den. Becky yeah, Hogg. in my house. And Becky Hogg was one of the interviewees wasn't she yes so you had yes. the the presenters at the time were uh alan and tony of Hello. course uh simon yes. and david and david, which, david who david. you may remember from such podcasts as this, <laughs> this podcast, podcast. <laughs> a few <laughs> seasons ago yes yes cool. our original lineup some would say the best what else do we have in uh <laughs> season one then um, moving on from that well lots of firsts surprisingly <laughs> yes. enough um <laughs> The first competition was in episode four. Oh, right. Okay. Um, which was an Ubuntu trivia quiz um, uh, with the winner chosen by Mark Shuttleworth himself. Live oh, yes. on the phone? Mm, Not live. No. 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 I can't remember how we did that. It was the. It was a, uh, a number system <laughs> oh, that Mark said, had supplied us. <laughs> yes. 
Oh, yeah. It was he some... brought you a random generator or something, didn't he? <laughs> yes, that's yeah. right. It Brilliant. was done with code. Yes. And uh, awesome. the prize <laughs> programmatical <laughs> Mark Shuttleworth. <Yes. laughs> VMS. Emulator. Yes, we got some Chemical Store vouchers, didn't we? We blagged yeah, for we quite a lot of them. Quite a they lot lasted of for about two years. <laughs> when, yeah. when none of us worked for Canonical, we blagged stuff from them. Yeah. Um, yes. Most of us still don't. Mm. Just for the people who write it. 75% and of the team don't work for Canonical. <laughs> <laughs> Yet. And, uh, <laughs> Laura's first, your first uh, episode was episode oh. five. Uh, yes. Season one. Uh, I was always in the background. You were you were known as producer Laura. Yeah, yeah. in those days, and you used oh, to get I didn't really produce annoyed. Anything. <laughs> used to get really annoyed because yeah. you didn't have a microphone, more, more <laughs> and they'd like... all sit there talking rubbish, and I'd be like, ah. Yes, nothing changes. We now still sit here talking rubbish, <laughs> and you yawn. The, the boots <laughs> on the other foot. Isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> just a bit. What else? Ooh, first Jono. interview with Jono. Yeah, first of many. Yes, mm. we're trying to work out if we think Jono is our most interviewed. Has, person. has he made it into one per season at least? Probably. He's not, he's not been in this one, has he? Has not he? yet. No. Not yet. There's okay. still time. We can fix that. Yes. Uh, and we gave away an efficient PC. Wow. Mm. We have the penchant for giving mm. away low power yeah. computers, don't we? Speaking of yes. which, in the, the episode after that, Oh, ah, the infamous ah. episode 11. That's yes. probably our best selling episode ever. Yes. Selling. We should <laughs> totally sell these episodes. <laughs> we recorded it outside in the garden. It was an evening like this. And by the time that we'd ended the podcast recording, it was dark. <laughs> yes, yes. Like we this. couldn't see what we were doing. Why did we do it outside? It was a nice weather. It yeah, seemed okay. like a good idea. But yeah, yeah. episode 11 you gave away more. the Viglan MPCL. Yes. yes. That's yes. the most downloaded episode. Yes, we had a special offer, didn't we? Yeah. <laughs> and, it's, and it still gets pimped by IBMers. <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You see them do presentations about de- uh, energy monitoring and they say, oh, and it's got this Viglan MPCL on it. Wow. Which you can get from the... <laughs> <laughs> you see that offer linked to from forums all over the place. It's great. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, we started uh, Sarcastic News <laughs> Sarcastic in news. episode 13. I remember that. That's because we didn't want to do actual news. Because that would be dull. Um, and it would mean research. And yeah. would mean we'd have to talk serious about serious subjects. Yes. We didn't want to do that. So we just wanted to be sarky about the news. At this stage, it did take us an entire day to record an episode. <laughs> mm. We'd yeah, meet up true. on a Sunday it and we wasn't... would literally be pretty much the whole it day. It was Sunday, wasn't it? It was a yeah. Sunday. Yeah, it was awful. <laughs> <laughs> It was <laughs> awful, and you weren't even in. It was an entire, well, it was. Well, it was an entire day every fortnight. Mm. Wow, yeah, got better. <laughs> um, oh, I remember we did, the, we did a live show. Well, we kind of recorded it at the Creative Pro Expo featuring Mac Live Expo and Linux Live Expo <laughs> event. What a Expo, great Expo, name. Expo. Oh, is that Expo, when we volunteered Expo. on the canonical song? Yeah, yeah. yeah, on the Ubuntu stand, and Ubuntu the Ubuntu stand. stand got removed, and we ended up on the canonical, canonical stand. stand. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh with mm. loads of IBMers nearby, and um, yeah, there was an IBM stand, and I yeah, got a free was. hat. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we interviewed a few people from uh, from various projects at, yeah. uh, at that event and i got a picture taken with a giant tux mm. massive tux cool right so, someone's written in the notes adobe release 64-bit flash for linux yeah yeah mm. mm. moving on <laughs> yeah uh we recorded an episode at uds that was the, the end of the first season Eventually, we released it in the <clears throat> january i think following wow. the, the uds at mountain view Which, that, one. Uh, that was in google yeah, Where 2008. You were, you were in a yeah. cupboard. I was in a cupboard. <laughs> video. We people. locked you in a cupboard for a week. Yeah. People knew they were being videoed, I have to add. Yes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't a little peephole, but you were videoing. That's what it sounded like. Cupboard. Okay. <laughs> that was the one where, uh, on the last night, I was trying to finish recording the podcast, and uh, lots of people around me had had a few beers, and it got very, very tedious. <laughs> 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 Didn't want you trying to interview da- uh, something with Dave? The next morning, he didn't get up. Uh, no, that was in Prague. That he oh, didn't right. get up to do that one. <laughs> yes, that was another UBS. Yeah, and that right. was the end of season it one. It was, yeah, twenty episodes. Season two. What happened then? Uh, uh, we started interviews. <laughs> yeah, we started off uh, an interview with Scott James Remnant. Yeah, yeah. Uh, at oh, yeah. the time, he worked for Canonical, and he was working on Upstart. He's now gone to Google. Google yeah, time yeah. to move on. And interesting, at the beginning of season two, which was in two thousand and nine, we mused about the death of Rhythmbox. Um, <laughs> because it wasn't being really actively developed anymore. And at the time, it was the default music player in Ubuntu. Nope. There were all those calls for Banshee, weren't there? Yeah, which later on happened. Yeah. And now we're back to back Rhythmbox. Back to Rhythmbox. 
few sessions. Uh, we also, in episode two, we started introducing lots of new segments throughout that season. <laughs> uh, a new one, which we called the Ubuntu Ecosphere. Oh, that started yeah. all that. Some were more successful than others. Yes. Yeah. Where we highlight what's going on in the Ubuntu world. And that's one of the only segments other than the news that we still do now. Mm. We took it very seriously, didn't we? Well, Did we? we highlight what's going on in the Ubuntu yeah, world. Yeah, now we just randomly smash the keyboard. <laughs> <laughs> We are literally a cage of infinite monkeys. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, episode three, we discussed the relationship between developers and users after uh, there was a celebrity bug um, about the update notifier icon. Wow, yes. You may remember that icon that no longer exists. Yeah, because we don't have any icons anymore. No, we don't do from, icons. Apart from all the ones that we do have. And uh, I dug out an article we talked about where Stephen J. Vaughan Nichols uh, ponders about slow computers being able to run Linux, the slowest thing you can mm. run Linux on. And uh, he mentioned that Ubuntu 904, which is due to arrive this week, the official minimum requirements for this popular Linux distro are a 700 megahertz processor and 256 meg of RAM, which is not much. And it's about the <laughs> the size of a Raspberry Pi now. Yeah. Wow. And that was like three years ago. Yes. Mm. And the uh, Miro project was having an interesting funding model of adopting a line of code. We talked about that in episode yes. four. I love How that idea. How did that go? Yes. Well, it hasn't a model that hasn't taken off and taken over the world, has it? Mm. Mm. But you know, it was the start of those interesting ways of uh, financing open source products. Yeah, yeah, I saw quite a lot of those over the last few years. Simon introduces the command line love, the command line love, as he indeed. would say, <laughs> with yeah. Lishwa, which we we do still do occasionally when we have time, when we run out of other ideas. Well, <laughs> time to fill. well you know, yes. Uh, and there was an outrage about the uh, lack of Palm Pilot support. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny when you look back at like, uh, these these, these uh, discussions outrageous. that happen. You know, these like storm in a teacup about you know GIMP was removed the CD and the fact that we removed Palm Pilot support. Who uses a Palm Pilot now? I mean, okay, that was two three years ago. But Emails, if you do. I think I might have done at the point at that point. I'll be honest. So you were the outraged one. Yeah. Did you well, write in? I probably just installed it throughout. There were hundreds of comments on that bug report about it. <laughs> yeah. Hey-ho. Moving on. Yes. We started an upcoming segment, which then stopped. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even remember that. No, yeah, no. it was like, what's coming up in the next release of Ubuntu? Oh, right. Upcoming, That's kind of not this for you. segment. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. A couple of good interviews. Kariba Singh from CentOS and Dustin Kirkland about Biobu and Ecrypt mm. A couple of good interviews on that one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and we had the pronunciation um, police police getting on to us about the uh, uh, how to pronounce Ubuntu or yeah. Ubuntu. Yeah. Ubuntu. Uh, uh, yeah, Ubuntu. Exactly. Ubuntu. Exactly. Ubuntu. You got to say it with that South African accent. I try. <laughs> uh, we also had oh, another yeah. new segment. Just a moment. Just a moment. <laughs> which <laughs> I remember uh, that. Yeah, we didn't do for long. I mean, like it only once. lasted about a moment. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think Tony was a big fan of that. No, I, I, well, 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 it was quite scathing at the time. Uh, I think. Okay, was yeah. I? Okay, yeah. I'm always up for what we're learning here about. Uh, <laughs> 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 always up for silly games. First dog camp. Yeah, yes. so our second season with the first dog camp. Mm. That was that was organised in quite short notice, wasn't it? Really? Yeah. Yes. Like two months or something. Two, two or three months, I think it was. Yeah. 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 Which, to be fair, is all we had for our camp ten as well. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now this pain is just spread out over a lot longer. A period. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and of course, back then we still lamented the state of uh, content creation in Linux, and nothing seems to have changed since then. No, video really. editors still crash. Yeah. Mm. Still very easy to write code. <laughs> Beginning of season three, we interviewed two young lads, Kirill and uh, Artyom uh, Zorin, about Zorin OS. Which, which is, is still, still going. Yeah, isn't still it? going. And which is really cool. Pretty popular, and is now yeah. pay, payware. Wow! Oh, right. Okay. And you, I mean, I think there's a the CD you can get, but there's the various levels, and yeah. some of the spins uh, cost money. And I know they've blogged about how many hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people they have using Zorin. That's cool. really seems, cool. Seems pretty popular. Yeah. This was two kids in there. Yeah, yeah, they were secondary yeah. school, weren't they? Yeah, they yeah. were. Yeah, it was a hobby in their spare spare time, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. they built a business around it. it brilliant. Yeah, that's brilliant stuff. Wow. Uh, so we interviewed Stuart Language about the Ubuntu One Music Store. Yeah, and Shot of started. Jack. And Shot of Jack. Yeah, which... that came and went. <laughs> <laughs> like it shot, shot in off. the dark. <laughs> <laughs> and the theme changed from brown to purple. Ooh. Did it? For Ubuntu. For the brand, yeah. I think you mean aubergine. Oh, indeed. Oh, I'm sorry. 
Yes. But, yeah, that was another brouhaha because it landed quite late in the cycle. Yeah. And, and everybody everyone got loved upset. the brown. <laughs> yeah. yeah, people couldn't get enough of the brown. Uh, but Matt Assay joined Canonical. As a and, COO, wasn't he? Yeah, and he's yeah. now left. Yes. Yeah, he came mm. and went as well. Mm. We talked to Ivanka Magic, who was the new design lead, uh, who's now off travelling the world. No, she's back now. She's oh. back. Yes, she went. She oh. did a tour of North to South America. Yeah. She's back, back with Canonical. Yeah, she's the back at Canonical in the design team. Cool. Yep. Oh, cool. Excellent. Excellent. We uh, reviewed a cooler ebook reader, which at the time was probably the first ebook reader we'd laid our hands on. It was pre Kindle, yep. wasn't it? It was. Mm. It was pink. It and was the screws fell out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was the review one, wasn't it? Yeah. They clearly had a lot of hands on it. Yeah, yeah. people oh, have yeah. been taking it apart. Yes. Uh, and we had guest presenters, um, Fluffy Tux and Firefox. What? Was, was this I'm our, a bit confused. I, I don't, don't remember, remember this. This <laughs> <laughs> is our equivalent of the tub of lard. When somebody didn't turn up, we replaced there, it with a stuffed toy. There were only three <laughs> presenters there, but I can't remember who was the fourth official one. I don't think I, I was remember, official then. I remember being there when Ivanka was interviewed. Yeah. So it's probably Dave wasn't there, I, I would imagine. Yeah. Sounds about right. Yeah. So in episode four... Uh, we interviewed Simon Phipps. Was that when he actually came to the studio? Yeah, I think he came into he came into the studio, didn't he? Yeah, yeah but the, studio. but the really the really <laughs> exciting news was that the buttons were changing side. Oh my the god! Uh, yes, another yeah. catastrophe that has and, befallen Ubuntu, and now nobody uses Ubuntu as a result of that. Mark my words, is what people said. At yeah, the time. mark your words. And two weeks later, in episode five. They were still complaining about the buttons. <laughs> I think Amazing. the button things went on for most of that. Season. I, I think, think probably at, at that fair. point, I was using KDE and I'd already, a couple of years beforehand, manually moved my buttons to the left. Oh, right. So that... I'll get you. Yeah. Just ahead of What's the What's all the fuss yeah. about? Yeah, exactly. I was amazed that people actually cared that much. And Crunchbang moved to Debian from Ubuntu, but I don't think that had much to do with the buttons. No, but Crunchbang's uh, got a new uh, alpha release. Mm. Pre, yep. uh, release yeah, just came out. He's been working yeah. on that hard recently. Yeah. Uh, we had the Ocamp 10 live show. That was the one in Liverpool in that terrifying kind of tall room with all the balconies that reminded mm. me of the Coliseum or something. <laughs> <laughs> Alan doesn't remember being there for that one. I remember Paul. watching it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mark and you presented audience. on patents. Oh, God, that was fun, wasn't it? Yeah. I also presented on something which I was actually a bit more qualified to talk about, uh, SVG <laughs> in, in, the, uh, in the basement. Oh, right, yeah. And Alan presented about Mumbuntu. That's right. <gasps> yeah. Yeah. Yes. My mum went to watch that. Yes. Well, this Saturday we'll be back in Liverpool. Yes. yes. Uh, we had uh, interviews from UDS in episode eight. So lots of people. Robbie Williamson from Foundations and um, uh, Case Cook. Case Cook. Case. And Case Cook and Rick Spencer. Um, so that was a interesting roundup of selections. That was ones where I think you recorded them there. And yeah, we recorded them, them remotely yeah. and then sent you the WAV files, yeah. yeah. And we, want, we clearly wanted an easy ride because we got two episodes out of those yes. UDS yeah, interviews. Yeah, loads more interviews, yeah. And George Castro. And yeah, I think George Castro is probably the second most interviewed person on the <laughs> yeah. Yes. Uh, episode 10, encrypted home directories. We were talking mm. about EcryptFS and stuff. Mm. Yes. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Lots of stuff going on. And there. Benjamin Humphrey, we interviewed him from the Ubuntu Manual Project. Mm -hmm. Still going, the Ubuntu Manual Project. Yeah. They just yep. recently released for 1204 and put out a call for help for 1210. So that's good. And there were wow. rumours that Dell was going to stop selling Ubuntu laptops and netbooks, but they weren't. It's but good. then they seem to do. And did, now they're and about that, yeah. to do some more. Yes. Yeah, they're brilliant. Are. So they sell loads, actually. Are they? Yeah. Cool. They just do not sell in this country. Loads around the world. Around <laughs> the world. <laughs> they sell <laughs> loads. Real. Um, episode 17 was our live show from Os Bar Camp in Dublin with oh Dave gosh. and Alan and myself. And we did, that was probably our smoothest running live show, um, but with that the smallest audience. That was incredibly audience. scary. <laughs> it yeah, was, it was like it? 10 people in the room. We did yeah. basically what we do now, and, and but live with yeah. an audience. Uh, it was great. And we had a great weekend. And Laura Tchaikovsky looked after us very well in Dublin. Yes. Hopefully she'll do the same in Limerick as well. <laughs> Uh, so we had Mark Johnson as guest Ooh, presenter who? in episode 18. I, heard, I hear he's really cool and a really good presenter. That yeah. was quite lucky to get him. Yeah. Yes. And we interviewed Tim Dobson about the Yungri Wide State, which ah. has just happened again yeah. very that. recently. I do remember interviewing a man from the Open Sue's Build Service. Yes. Yeah, I didn't write him down. No, didn't you? <laughs> I must That's have missed a shame. that one. Oh. Well, <laughs> I, yeah. Yes. Now you highlighted it. And 19 was uh, Simon's last show. Was it? Oh. And Mark's first. My first as, as an official proper presenter. Oh, I thought it happened at the end of the season. Well, you live and learn. Oh. No, Fairly close to the end. Just before the end, I sort mm. of 
wandered Snuck in, and in you can get rid yeah. of me. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And we interviewed Dr. Sue Black. Yes. About who's Bletchley now Park. even more famous than she was then. Yes. Down to us. Yes, that was at... Um, <laughs> we'll take credit for that. <laughs> <laughs> not, not, not the massive good thing work she done. does. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't say where, where it was, but you were somewhere. I was at a bar camp in London, and I can't remember the name of it, but it yeah. was good. Uh, and there was also an announcement that Unity would be the default for new users from 11.04. And outrage ah. ensued. Yeah. Oh, yes, Indeed. more catastrophe, <laughs> yeah. and nobody will use Ubuntu, and yeah. Just wait till they drop the 3D support, then... Uh, 2D support, then nobody will be able to use it. <laughs> so in episode 20, we interviewed the lovely Anna Nelson about her project to make documentation sexy with Dexy. Dexy yeah, which I've since used. Yep, uh, you have been proper clever. for work yeah, as well. properly actually writing documentation with it. Cool. Mm. And Andy Piper guest presented for the first time. I think he was a bit put episode. out that I was a guest presenter. <laughs> and he wasn't. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, Muscled his way into the <laughs> show. <laughs> So episode Blimey. 22 was WikiLeaks week. Ooh. Oh. Remember Lots. that? Oh, oh. Right. The big week of the all big the big Guardian the WikiLeaks cables. week. Yeah, all the mm. tables. Yeah, and we, we interviewed done. Cassidy James from the Ubuntu Adverts team, which is no longer... <laughs> oh, yes, Ubuntu Oh, Adverts. about their plans for world domination. Whoops. Yeah. <laughs> and we, re- we, we rounded off the whole thing with the Jack and the Beanstalk um, <laughs> pantomime. That was with Simon one. starring as the cow. Yes. Oh, oh yeah. Did he come so back especially for that? He's, he's mooing. Yeah, he's... Yeah. Oh, that was so brilliant. So much character in he, that <laughs> moo. <laughs> it really incredible. Was. So, yeah, Simon was definitely around for the, that last episode of the season. So, anyway, uh, season four, we uh, have Mark back with us, full-time new presenter. We're, We're going to go through season now. four very, very quickly. <laughs> We're already but it was also over. a season of first. So we had Mark. We had the first Wing Commander. Oh, <gasps> who could forget the Wing, wing Commander? Commander. So Arthur Commander. Um, we had the People first are going to think our, it's you again now. We had the first. It's not me. The first of our popular series of quizzes. <laughs> Yay. That they lasted. weren't that. Yeah. They, they had about eight throughout the whole season. I only came up with that idea on the way down here in the car. And, and then, then we, you made it happen. And then yeah. we did and it. And yes. people actually thought we did have a big board on the wall, big interactive Shut board. Up, people are gullible. big 3D. But I did actually make a, a proper board for yeah. that. We also saw the debut of the Not About Ubuntu within the Bit About Ubuntu segment. Yes. Which, was, which was what the named. ecosphere had become by then yeah. after being called Gerald for a while. And, and, it, and this Marino was just to show and... that we have balance. <laughs> We had our. <laughs> There's a look. We, we do. We had our first stunt Laura, Laura Tchaikovsky. Yep. Our only yep. stunt Laura. Well, yes. Actually, yes. A um, load of other stuff. We interviewed John O'Bacon again in episode seven. Alan's dishwasher put in an appearance <laughs> in episode seven. <laughs> beep, beep. Uh, the new font appeared in episode eight. Gosh. Controversy. Is, is font beta? news. Yeah, font <laughs> news. <laughs> episode nine, we interviewed the lovely Barnaby Edwards. Yay. Um, who I've since you know met at the convention. Yeah, things, yeah, yeah. 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 He gave you a big hug. Episode eleven, Google Plus launched. Wow, where so would we be without it? Uh, anyway, yeah. uh, George Castro again. Again, um, John O'Bacon again in episode seven. We had uh, Old Camp eleven. Old Camp eleven. I was in Farnham, Farnham wasn't it? Farnham. Yeah. Yeah. Was last yes. year's. We did Matt Ravel adding to our tally of Lug Radio presenters who were interviewed on the show. Uh, lots of other stuff happened. Uh, the Ubuntu Happy Hour in Farnborough, where we sat in a pub for about three hours. But yes. There was a happy hour in the middle of it. Um, we went to Home Camp 4, didn't we? We did a couple of interviews oh, we there, did. Laura. Uh, we um, chatted to Floppy. Yep. At Floppy That's on his Twitter. nickname, not, you know. Okay. Yeah. Um, I won the season of quizzes at the end I, of it. I, I, I dispute that. I dispute that. Don't even remember. Got no. to play my fanfare. And, and we <laughs> oh, rounded God. off the season with A Christmas Carol. Yes. So what have we fun. done this season? Anything worth noting? No. 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 Right. <laughs> so we're only five minutes over. That's fine. Well, I hope you'll enjoy, uh, indulge us as we uh, look back through our little... 100 episode history there. There's and why highlights. not email in your favourite moments from the past 100 episodes? <laughs> and we can cobble together a segment out of that. Brilliant idea. Where can they send them, Mark? Uh, that's podcast at ubuntu-uk.org or tweet us on at UPC. Um, and we've got a Facebook page and a Google Plus page and... Do we have an app My dot, space, do we have an app dot net account? Friendster. I can't even remember the uh, open source. So Twitter. dot cool. No. Identica. Okay. Identica. Then. We don't Identica. have one of them anymore. No. Okay. Cool. Well, it would really be nice to hear your uh, memories of the last 100 episodes. A cat has just started on the laptop we used to broadcast the show. And uh, we're going to get on with the next segment. <laughs> It's time for the ecosphere. Uh, what? 
<laughs> Just going back Go for it, Tony. in time. Valve has revealed that during the development of Left 4 Dead 2 for Ubuntu, they found that the port outperformed the well-established Windows version due to the efficiency of OpenGL and the Linux kernel. That's Ooh. pretty cool. It yeah. is, and what's really lovely is that they blogged about it, and it wasn't just internal data that they, you know, they didn't pass on anywhere. They publicly mm. said how they found out this stuff, and how actually the development on Linux they fed back into Windows and made the Windows version faster as well. So oh, everyone cool. wins. Yeah. Win, so win. this whole porting games to Linux thing is a good thing. But, but Ubuntu is faster than Windows. That's what we're saying. But yeah. fact, fact, yes. fact, fact. Okay, Laura. An autonomous car that's able to drive itself safely in heavy city traffic has been demoed running Ubuntu. Well, actually, the wow. car is running Ubuntu. Or... I have no idea. Well, I the, they, there's they, a they screenshot had... somewhere. No, they had Ubuntu they had a it. shot of of the interface which showed sort of all the feeds from all the sensors and what the car was seeing around it and everything it was doing. Right. And the the dash mounted computer was running Unity. Oh. And this oh. interface was just in a window. That's one, that's on, one on good Unity. thing about the uh, Unity UI. is pretty distinctive when you see <laughs> it on a, on, a, on a TV program. In the back. It's like, oh my God, look, there's Ubuntu. Yeah. Mm. Mark, the winners of the Ubuntu app showdown have been announced. Mm. Okay, who won? Um, Lightread, wasn't it? Yeah, which is an RSS reader. Sort a of a Google RSS reader RSS client reader. with a very nice uh, interface. RSS reader. Oh, is it? I yes. thought it was. I thought it hooked it. Never mind. Sorry. RSS reader. Misinformed. Just reads RSS. Um, and um, Togger? Just. Was that another, uh, another winner? Follow the link. Follow the link. Okay. Well, there'll be a <laughs> but link there in the like show notes. There were 130 entries. And, yeah. Yeah, there's various levels of um, you know, how finished they are. And yeah. Cool. There's some good stuff in there. Cool. So they win a laptop, I think. Yes, and an N9. And an N9. Mm. Excellent. Mm. There have been discussions among Ubuntu developers about keeping the current version of Nautilus for 12.10 rather than switching to the new stripped-down version from upstream GNOME. Mm, Why? Because, uh, well, the new version is... It, it, is it changes quicker? a lot of things. They've made some design decisions and changed the way it behaves and moved some things about, and um, it's met with a bit of resistance and... Um, I, I've personally been using it for a while and I hate it. <laughs> so you know, that's just my personal opinion. Um, but yeah, there's there's things that I've got ingrained in me that like going back a directory, pressing backspace to go back. Mm. Oh, right. yeah, you I've seen that. that. That's, you have to yeah. press alt up to go back Obviously. or up. Um, and things like uh, when you search, what I usually do to search in a directory listing is just type the first couple of letters of a file yeah. and the, the highlight jumps to that. Yeah, mm. fun. Yeah. That doesn't work anymore. Oh, okay. Stuff like that. It's Isn't it annoying cool. when they, they take something that you're really used to and uh, change it around? Yeah. yeah. Until... <laughs> <coughs> Buns! <laughs> <laughs> Whoopsie! The crash reporting tool will be switched off on the 1204.1 release as its frequent notifications have been giving users the impression of an unstable system. <laughs> well, it might be. It might not. It's uh, oh, That's right. quite a long discussion thread between um, the developers about whether whether it's a good idea to turn it off or not. People have been complaining, saying that 1204 is less stable than previous releases because they keep getting this crash reporting dialogue, yeah. when actually it's just that they didn't have that crash reporting dialogue in previous releases. Right. Mm. So it's actually just as crashy as it was before, but now you know about it. So but then uh, crashing are things you don't really notice. Well, yeah, I, I keep on getting a thing popping up saying, Ubuntu has crashed... And everything still appears to be working, and I just have to click go away. And that's not actually useful to me to know that something in the background that doesn't actually affect what I'm doing has died. Yeah, so basically when you hit OK, it, bam, sends a report to Ubuntu. Yeah. So if you go to errors.ubuntu.com, you'll see a giant list of all the things that have been crashing in the, you know, in the recent past. Why does it need me to click OK? Because we kind of want to want you to know that Consent. you're sending stuff to us. You can close the dialogue and it won't go. Um, right. So. Can there be a checkbox that just says do this automatically yeah, in the future? Um, sort it out. <laughs> Find a bug. <laughs> cool. That's the bit about Ubuntu. Laura, what's in the nod about Ubuntu? Uh, Open Data Wizard Chris Gutteridge has blogged some of the responses he's had from people in his institution to requests for data for publication. And this ranges from things like... Um, we don't want to publish data because we're not, uh, you know, we're not confident that it's reliable. To uh, what if the data is used by terrorists and things like and this, that? This is what things like where the local cock machine is. Yeah, think. Well, yeah, probably things that are actually a bit more useful. Than All that. right, but yeah, so things which under the the 
policy of what they want to publish can and probably should be published but you have to make sure that the people who uh who have the data can actually give it to you yeah and convince them that that's what they want to do cool and finally, in Not About Ubuntu, Debian is switching to XFCE as its standard desktop environment. Shock horror. Wow. Interesting. No? Okay. Cool. So it's keeping it light. Yes. Keeping it light. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's gone. <laughs> so am I. Now it's time for your feedback. <laughs> Hooray. Andy Stamber Clark points out it's UUPC's 100th episode, and this weekend is Ogcamp's binary 100th birthday. Oh, is it? So it is. It's yeah. Yeah. fifth, sixth, no, twelve, sixth, twelve, sorry? eight. What? Binary 100th birthday. Fourth. Fourth. Yeah. The fourth yeah. camp. <laughs> Somebody else also said it's this weekend is the eighth uh, anniversary of OpenStreetMap. Oh, yes. Um, this Sunday. UK yeah. or something like that. So, oh, uh, we're and I, meant to, company. I meant to put that in the events because apparently there's stuff happening around London to celebrate. So, But don't go to that. Go to camp. camp. Yeah. yeah, obviously. Stuff that. If you're not there. <laughs> Laura. New listener Jamie left us a comment on our website. Recently discovered UUPC and as a newcomer to the world of Linux, open source and indeed computing as a whole, I find them immensely informative, entertaining and fun. I can't wait for the next one. Keep up the good work. Excellent. Thank you, Jamie. I think that's referring to this podcast. Hope so. (laughs) (laughs) Russell Phillips tweeted... Found this looks like humble bundle for ebooks, and this isn't the one that we were talking about in oh, the news. Mm, yeah. Something else. It's snugnugget.com. <laughs> Great name. So if you go to snugnugget.com, <laughs> it sounds um, even better in your you, accent. It's best. <laughs> snugnugget. <laughs> <laughs> uh, dear. How do we ever get to um... <laughs> <laughs> him? So yeah, you can snug go there nugget. and get a different bundle of books. Excellent. Excellent. It's basically the same, same idea. idea. No DRM, pay what you want. It's quite yep. good. Excellent. Cool. And that's the end of your feedback. And that's all for this episode. Thank you so much for listening <laughs> tonight and for my last... 99 episodes plus yeah. give or take one here or there um, you can find out how to get in touch with us on our website podcast.ubuntu-uk.org including voicemail numbers and twitter feeds facebook and irc channels let us know what you think of the show <laughs> and whether we should carry on beyond this um, or give us your thoughts about ubuntu and the community around it our next episode will be the live show at the linux outlaws uh, with the linux what? outlaws <laughs> from our camp Dan's house. up in Liverpool. Pool. Yep. Uh, but join us on Tuesday the 11th of September. You can listen to that as well. But join us on Tuesday the 11th of September for our next live broadcast from the studio. Yes. Cool. So the Linux Outlaws episode will be out as normal um, the, from our camp kind of yep. the, a few days after. So I think we have something quite special actually. planned for that. So it's well worth a listen. Apparently. Do we? I'm, I'd love to know what it is. Yeah, we're involved. But if we're you not be not. reading the mass, never mind. <laughs> Well, <laughs> the, mis- the mystery grows deeper. Yeah. Thank you for listening, and thank you for listening for the last 100 episodes. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.